All right, you guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I thought in today's video we would do another fig review. We have a variety here that's brand new to me. I've never talked about it really on the channel. We've talked about it a little bit on our blog, figboss.com. This is called Vagabond. And it's a smaller fruit that's typically oval shaped, um, short neck, short stem. And uh, it seems to do really well here. I'm really impressed with this new variety. I rooted it two winters ago. So this is really, it's only its second year, its second growing season. Uh, rooted it from cutting in the wintertime, put it into a five gallon size pot, and uh, it started growing obviously. And it, this year it really started to put out a lot of fruit. Uh, it seems to do pretty well in terms of production and just ripening generally at a reasonable time of the season. Um, and the fruits are beautiful. The fruits are very tasty. It honestly reminds me of a grape. I'm a big fan of this fruit. Um, so that's why we're doing it. We're talking about the fruits that, or at least I'm not reviewing every single fig variety I have. We're talking about either the really good ones or the really bad ones. Really anything in between is kind of just like, I don't know, in my opinion, a kind of a waste of your time. But here's the fruits. And, uh, or here's a fruit, I should say. And I've harvested quite a bit off of this. You know, today is mid-September. And I think these started around September 1st, something like that. You can see how like, it's kind of like shaped like a, uh, almost like an oval with a little bit of a flat bottom to it, but they haven't split. And in fact, they have been um, pretty good in terms of their drying capabilities as well. And when you really let them ripen, here's the best part about it. The fruits are really beautiful. In fact, this one here, I'm opening this up and it looks just like a, uh, a black Celeste. I mean, it's so striking on the inside there that holy crap, right? I mean, it's purple, right? It's purple and black, just like black Celeste gets on the inside. The exterior also has that amazing blue color to it. In fact, I may even have a black Celeste behind me. We will, like, maybe if it's ripe, I'll pick it. Let's see here. It's not exactly right, but so I'm going to wait, but I'll show you the outside, the color of it compared to this black Celeste is pretty close in color. Maybe because my hand has been all over the skin now, it's a little bit different, but you can see how blue both of them are and very, just very striking, you know, almost like a I've shown you guys in other videos a Mars grape um, or a Concord grape. They really get that awesome blush to them, that awesome blue color. So for me, this is a very, very good piece of fruit. Um, I highly recommend it. The, you know, it's really hard to find, so it's going to take some time. In fact, my tree is so young. Uh, what I will do is plant this in the ground probably this season, uh, sometime in the, in the fall. And then hopefully next year it gets rather established and I can get enough cuttings to spread around to people. So this is just like a preliminary, um, you know, heads up that this is a very good variety. So let's try, let's try it. Very, very good. And um, the berry flavor is out like off the charts on this one. Very strong berry flavor. Um, especially when you really let it ripen. So there's one here on this tree that is, you could argue is ripe. I mean, I could pick it. You could say it's probably ripe, but it's just, it's not, I know it's not going to be as good as this. Here, maybe I'll open it up and show you guys. Because this is like intense berry, really it tastes like a grape, or maybe even a raspberry. The combination of them both. Um, it's so good. It's very sweet. Really not a lot of acidity. Here's the other one here, which actually has a different shape than I've typically seen. This one's more flat or round. And then here's the inside. So like I knew this needed more time. And maybe like a lot of people would pick it at this point and say, well, that's, you know, that's a ripe fig, but it's not gonna be anywhere near as good as what I just ate. So let me try this. Not as intense, 
you know, a lot lower on the berry flavor scale, um, not as sweet. Um, the complexity just isn't there as much, right? So that's the thing, right? And that's why I've always said, you gotta pick your figs at the right time. Every day they ripen on the tree, the better and better they get. And the more that you kinda, the more that you mess that up, the worse the experience is that you're gonna have. Like the one I, the first one I had, it was like a mind-blowing experience. I mean, that's like so good. Anyone not eating fruits or not eating figs at home or not growing their own fruits, I should say, is going to be like, wow, that's incredible. You know, they ate this, they may not. So it's just like, there's the difference. And so that you guys, when you grow this in the future, you know that this is right, but it's not like perfectly right. And I guess maybe, you know, in a typical scenario, it's what you have to put up with, but you know, I'm consistently getting them to that pretty ripe, dried, like shriveled stage. So that's the really awesome part about this fruit, I think. It dries well. So I'm excited just for that purpose. You know, maybe it's not going to dry as super well as like, uh, you know, Campanieri or, um, you know, Naruccio de Elba or Verdino del Nord, but it's up there for sure, and uh, you know, I think that's really a great part of this fruit that you ain't gonna hear anywhere else, I think. So, thanks for watching this one, guys. I appreciate the, uh, appreciate the view. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our other videos and even our blog, figboss.com. They have so much fig-related information on the internet at this point, it's insane. So, we'll see you guys there at one of those places. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll catch you for the next one. Take care.